Hi, my name is Ali Shersava uh, from Breacher Digital. We are in the pre-compliance test chamber of Omicron in Austria. And in this short video, we are going to talk about radiated emissions test. Radiated emissions test is concerned about how much your product is emitting in terms of RF energy. And we're going to have to make these measurements in order to make sure that we comply with the law. Obviously, if we're trying to measure uh, the amount of emissions that we've got from our device under test, that is our product, what we don't want to happen is emissions from other devices such as mobile phones or uh, radio mouse or TV signals to corrupt the measurement. Therefore, we have to do this measurement somewhere that is, is sealed like a Faraday cage and that is our test chamber. This is a metal box, a big metal box, whereby we test our equipment and the metal box stops external signals from getting in. Uh, the um, other problem, however, is that if, if the metal box is reflecting all of these RF signals, your own equipment on the test inside of the metal box is going to emit and is going to reflect off the walls and it's going to get picked up by the antenna. So this test is done in an anechoic or semi-anechoic chamber and by that what we mean is that you've got absorbing material on the wall so that whatever is being emitted from your device on the test gets absorbed and doesn't bounce back and get picked up by the antenna and corrupt your signal. The uh, test setup is defined in the standard and it may vary slightly depending on your product or application but typically it is a wooden table and an antenna and the device under test is placed on the wooden table and the emissions from this is picked up by the antenna and then it is compared against a limit line which is again defined in the standard. The device under test is usually placed on a wooden table, but obviously you don't know from which directions the emissions are happening. So in order to make sure that the antenna will pick up all the emissions from your device, the table is usually rotated so that the entire 360 degrees of emissions can be picked up by the antenna. And obviously, in order to get the worst case emissions, we would like to change the orientation of the antenna from, let's say, at the moment in its horizontal position to vertical. Now, combination of the rotation and of the, of the table and the orientation of the antenna will give you the maximum emissions this is picked up, which has to be under the, the limit line of the standard. The device under test in our case is a Bode 100 vector network analyzer and this is a USB control device. Uh, so this will get connected to a laptop or a PC. Obviously we cannot put the laptop here because then the emissions from the laptop will corrupt our measurement. And therefore uh, provisions are made for the USB cable to go down the table through some decoupling clamps and then out through this hatch to outside of the chamber so we can close this and now we are ready to perform the test. So all I have to do is walk out and close the test chamber. But a good example of showing that this test chamber is stopping all RF emissions from getting in is the fact that I am wearing a radio mic and as soon as I shut that door, we're gonna lose the signal from the mic and you're gonna hear a static. We are now ready to start the, the measurement. Uh, the Bode 100 is inside of the test chamber and is actually running. So uh, the uh, cable from the antenna comes through the test chamber and is connected to this receiver. The receiver will measure the emissions from the uh, device under test and it will display it on this laptop whereby you can see the red limit line. And you can see that at least for this one particular test, we are well below the limit line. However, remember that we need to turn the table and look at all the angles as the table rotates. In addition to rotating the table, of course, we also have to change the orientation of the antenna and the combination of different rotation angles and different orientation of the antenna will give you a set of curves, worst of which is taken as the one that needs to be below the limit line as specified in the standard. We have now completed our pre-compliance test and therefore we have got a lot of confidence that we can pass the full EMC test in a test chamber.